In this video, we are going to look at how plants get water, which is absorbed by the roots, all the way to the leaves, as well as how food made in the leaves gets to the roots. Have you ever wondered how plants get their nutrients and water to where they are needed? It's a fascinating process, involving a complex system that's as intricate as the blood vessels in our own bodies. Today, we delve into the world of plant physiology to uncover the secrets of this green machinery. First, we need to understand why a transport system is necessary for plants. Being multicellular organisms, the much-needed water and food nutrients wouldn't get far without a transport system. Thus, plants need a system to distribute water and mineral nutrients which are absorbed by the roots, as well as the sugars which they produce through photosynthesis, to all their parts. This system also helps in the removal of waste materials. Now, what does a plant need for this transportation? It's simple, a medium and materials to transport. The medium is typically water, and the materials include minerals, sugars, and other organic substances. Now onto the methods of transportation. Plants primarily use three methods, diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. Diffusion allows substances to move from an area of high concentration to one of lower concentration, a bit like people spreading out in a park. Osmosis is a special type of diffusion involving water. It is the movement of water molecules across a semi-permeable membrane from a solution with a high concentration to a solution with a lower concentration. Active transport, on the other hand, is the process where plants use energy to move substances against a concentration gradient, kind of like swimming upstream. So how do these substances travel? Enter the channels of transport, the xylem and phloem. The xylem, composed of long hollow cells called tracheides, transports water and minerals from roots to the rest of the plant. The phloem, on the other hand, moves food and other organic materials from leaves to other parts. These two make up the vascular bundle, the plant's highway system. Materials move into, through, and out of cells in a variety of ways. Root hairs, for instance, are specialized for absorption of water and mineral salts. They have a large surface area and thin walls, which makes them perfect for this job. Now let's talk about two crucial processes, transpiration and translocation. Transpiration is the process where water evaporates from the leaves, creating a pool that draws up water from the roots. Translocation is the movement of sugars from leaves to other parts of the plant. Transpiration can be of three types, stomatal, cuticular, and lenticular, with stomatal being the most common. Various factors, both plant-related and environmental, can affect the rate of transpiration. For example, high temperatures and wind speed can increase the rate of transpiration. Finally, we come to two key concepts capillarity and root pressure. Capillarity is the tendency of a liquid in a narrow tube to rise or fall due to surface tension, while root pressure is the pressure exerted by the roots to push water upwards. Both play a crucial role in the transportation of water and other materials in plants. So, in essence, the plant transport system is a marvel of nature, a powerhouse working round the clock, to ensure the survival and growth of the plant. From the humble root hairs to the mighty xylem and phloem, every component plays a vital role in this intricate process, proving once again that the beauty of nature lies in its complexity.